I'll introduce my wife. <laughs> this is Ann Wilson. She was my high school baseball coach's youngest daughter. Yeah, we didn't. We weren't in high school at the same time. That's because she was so much younger. You know, three years was a big deal in high school. <laughs> and so I didn't pay any attention to her. You know, until I went to college, I came back. Literally, was painting uh, a house of one of my coaches on the summer. And I said to the coach, I said, hey, who's the hottest chick in high school? He said, Ann Barron. I'm like, Ann Barron? You know, last time I left, she was like a little girl. And the next day I'm at the high school playing pickup basketball. Ann Barron walks, this woman walks into the gym. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's a woman. <laughs> of all the things, this is the one you pick. I That's picked so that to introduce you. It was oh like, gosh. she was the most gorgeous thing I'd ever seen. And I had just And that given, has a lot of depth to it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was just like, wow. I'd just given my life to Christ, brand new Christian. She had just given her life to Christ, and so we started talking, and the rest is history. We were married nine months later. Mm. <laughs> Hottest chick in high school right here. Oh, gosh. And that was a big high school. It's funny. We, we've actually been married 39 years in May, and um, Dave Wilson. How would I describe Dave Wilson? This ought to be interesting. When I first met Dave, I thought he is the most conceited He's arrogant, he's the big guy at our school because he became a college football player, quarterback, so everybody knew him and loved him. But the thing I remember when I met Dave and somebody told me, did you hear that Dave Wilson gave his life to Christ? I'm like, what, Dave Wilson? And then when we started talking, I thought, wow, this guy is the real deal. And then when we started dating, we had this passion together um, to impact the world for Jesus. And I thought, if I'm gonna do that, I wanna be beside this guy because where, where he's going, I wanna be with him because he's a world changer. Because he loves God so much and he wants to impact people wherever he goes. And, um, and it's been fun to be on that journey together because we've done a lot of different things together. We were on staff with crew for 15 years. Dave was the chaplain and I worked with the wives for the Detroit Lions for 33 years. We started a church 30 years ago. Yeah. So we've done a lot of different things and we just wrote our first book on marriage together. So and we're, we're old, I guess that says we're old. <laughs> <laughs> so Ann and I dated uh, almost nine months and uh, I was just about to graduate from college. We were driving to a conference called the Senior Panic Conference for seniors trying to figure out what they're gonna do with their life. And I thought it'd be pretty cool to propose to her on the drive to this conference. She didn't know this, obviously. I was only 19. Yeah, I'm 22. Dave's 22, so we're like babies. Here's how I did it, it was pretty, pretty cool, I think. You know, looking back, <laughs> I said to her, I said, hey, you know, the Bible says, uh, you know, the two shall become one and leave their father and mother. It's this thing about marriage. What do you think that means? And she's like, I'm not sure I know. I go, my Bible's right behind your seat. Pull it out, it's in Mark 10, you know? So she pulls my Bible, which I had stashed behind her seat. She pulls it out, opens up to Mark 10, and I had cut out the shape of an engagement ring and hid it in there. And so she yeah. opens it up, and there it is. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> that was a pretty cool That's moment. That's pretty good. I know. Yeah, so we got engaged and... And then, two weeks before we got married, because yeah. we were real involved with crew, and I was at the University of Kentucky, and Dave was at Ball State University in Indiana. And so all of the people on staff are saying, you have to go to this marriage conference before you get married, weekend we, to remember. Yeah. And so two weeks before we got married, we went to that thing, and we'd only been dating nine months, but we're like, why are these people at this conference taking these notes and they're like so locked in? We thought, how hard can marriage be? We love each other. We love Jesus. We're going to be amazing at this. We, did, we didn't take any notes. We just sat there and drew little pictures. We're going to be married in 13 days, 12 <laughs> days. Um, I mean, it was a great conference, it but was. we just didn't think we needed it. And then we got married. <laughs> and every married couple out there, you guys know how hard it is and six months later we're driving to Nebraska to start our first job and our first ministry and we're screaming at each other. Well if you would have asked me before we got married like tell me what are Dave, we Dave Wilson's weaknesses I would have said are you kidding he doesn't have any weak weaknesses he's amazing and then I six months in we're driving to Nebraska and I remember looking at Dave in on this drive and I remember thinking there is nothing I like about you I mean, that's what I thought. And so then she tells me. Yes. She yells so, this. I yell this because I thought it. Marrying you was the biggest mistake of my life. I say <laughs> that out loud. I'm, I'm yelled at, and I thought, I've married the wrong person. I really did think and that. I, and I thought the exact same thing. I yelled back, you know, what were we thinking? This was a bad, bad mistake. We're too young. There's all these reasons. 
And, you know, we had to figure it out. We got to Nebraska and, you know, we're starting a ministry with college athletes. And, and, and I'll up, add this too. Neither of, the, of us came from homes. Dave came from a divorced home. I came from a home that really, we didn't go to church. We didn't know anything about Jesus. So we had no modeling none. of what this looks like to bring God into the relationship and, and build a home based on Jesus. We didn't even know what that looked like. And so we get to Nebraska to start our ministry. And again, we're really struggling. And we're trying to figure this thing out. And it's so much harder than we, we thought. And we both really did sort of, we never said this out loud, but we thought I married the wrong person. Yeah. There's another one out there that probably was the right person, but it can't be this hard. Uh, so one night I crawled out of bed at like three in the morning because we're fighting and we can't sleep and I just want to get away from her. <laughs> And I go downstairs and I open the Bible and I'm reading the Bible and Ann comes walking down. Well, I wake up, it's like three in the morning. So I come downstairs and he's, he's sitting in this chair and he has this Bible on his lap. And we had been in a big fight. And so I'm thinking, oh good, at least he's <laughs> reading the Bible. And then he, I said to him, what are you doing? And he says, I'm just sitting here reading Paul's words to live as Christ and to die as gain. And I just told God, I would rather be dead than to be married to you. Who says that out loud? I should have never said that out loud. That was one of those. It was awful. We were sort of told before marriage, you share every minute detail. And no, that's bad wisdom. You know, that's not wisdom. That was bad. But I said that. Here's the thing. I actually prayed that that night. I mean, we're laughing now because yeah. we're married 39 years. But I was that desperate. I'm like, you know, to live as Christ, to die is even better. I'm like, I'd rather be home with you than married to her. Because that's how bad it was. Mm. We had not a clue no. how to make this thing work. So what happened? Here we are, 39 years later. We figured it out. Well, it was interesting. We were working with all these college athletes on the, at the University of Nebraska. Married athletes. They're married. And so they came to us, and they're all like, we're really struggling. Can you help us? And we're thinking, we can't even help ourselves. <laughs> so we go back, and we pull out that marriage manual from the weekend to remember. That's all we had. That's all we knew. And so we said, well, we have this. Maybe we could walk through it with these couples, and it would help us, and it would help them. And that was the And start. I'm telling you, one of the best things a couple can do to help their own marriage, and it's so ironic because you think, you focus on me, help me, and it's like, no, give your life away, serve mm -hmm. others. We started teaching that material 39 years ago. We've been teaching marriage principles around the country for now 30 years, and our marriage gets better. I don't know if any marriage in that room got better, but, but ours did. <laughs> yeah, it did. It literally saved our marriage. We mm -hmm. went to the Word of God and said, what's God's game plan for marriage? That's what, what the manual really is. And we taught it to others, and we started to apply it to ourselves, and God saved our marriage. What ended up happening, you know, we started, that's our first year of marriage, and, you know, 10 years later, we are from Nebraska to seminary, now in Detroit as the Detroit Lions chaplain. We have two little boys at home, and we're just about to launch this church. It was a dream. And I think every marriage goes through real highs and real lows. And so we had gone through some lows, we'd gone through some highs. But now we're at a real stressful point of our marriage 10 years in. As Dave said, we've got two little boys. He's traveling with the Detroit Lions. He's on the road. We're starting this church, which is this dream of ours, but it's this big dream. And so Dave's gone a lot, and we started fighting again. He went through another bad spot. Yeah, but we end up on our 10-year anniversary, and here, here I am, Mr. Romantic. I've got this great night planned. And I actually think we're doing great. If you'd asked me that day, What's your marriage on a scale of 1 to 10? I probably would have said it's a 10. It, it, it's a 9.8 at least. And I guarantee Ann will say the same thing. So I plan this night. So all, all of it's sort of a surprise. We go out to a nice restaurant. We have a nice meal. We talk over the meal. And here's what I did. I, I brought 10 roses. She didn't know this. To the waiter. And I said, hey, here's the deal. When I give you a look, bring one rose over at a time. And so I give him a look. He laid a rose on the table. And we talk about year one. Then number two, uh, two. That was really good. Like, so that, that was, a pretty was cool super night. romantic. So we talked about amazing. each year, the last 10 years. And I thought, we're doing great. This is awesome. And so we're driving home, and I had one more surprise. And that was uh, to pull into the parking lot of this little middle school where we were about to start our church, which she hadn't seen. We had just signed a contract. And it's midnight. And I thought, let's pull in there. We'll pray that God will bless you know the beginning of this church. And then... I mean, to be honest, I just thought it'd be fun to go parking. If you know what parking is. <laughs> if you don't know what parking is, look it up. <laughs> and so we get there, and, you know, the prayer was really short because Dave's all about the parking spot part. 
This and, is on a Honda Accord, by the way. Yeah. This is not going to go well. And so he goes to kiss me, just on the cheek. He goes to kiss me, and he's making his move. And I pulled away. And so he's thinking, whoa, sh sh I just had this great night. Like, I've done all the right things. Surely she didn't pull away. So I tried to kiss her again, thinking she didn't know I was trying to kiss her, and she turns. So I asked the question no husband wants to ask, <laughs> but I knew I had to. I'm like... It's funny, we're sitting on, just I like know. we were in the car. Yeah. I said, uh, is anything wrong? And I didn't want to go there because he had just had this spectacular night and it was really great. But I almost also felt like I can't fake this. And so I said, well, actually, I've lost all my feelings for you. I have nothing left. And where Dave thought we were a 10, I would have said we're a one probably closer to a 0.5. And I was even more mad that he was so clueless to how we were doing. I felt like, you don't know because you don't care. You're out conquering the world, but you've left me behind. So we were fighting about our schedule. And I told him like, I just feel like I've got nothing. I have no hope that we're gonna make it. And I was getting ready for the fight to begin because when I would say things like this before in the past, and I probably didn't say them very nicely, when I would say things like that, Dave would get mad and angry and defend himself, and then we just do this cycle that we always did. And so I was ready for him to get angry. So as she started telling me that she lost her feelings, which is chapter one of the book, it's literally like those words changed our life. Because I hear those shocked. I mean, I'm almost like, what? Because I'm not in that space at all. And then she starts to share why she lost and her feelings. And I had told him, I started out being so angry. My anger turned to bitterness. My bitterness turned to resentment. And after a while, my resentment turned to nothing. I have nothing left. I don't even care that you're gone anymore. And that's at a, a really dangerous place to be in a marriage. So she's sharing that, and you won't believe this. Here's what I'm doing. I'm reaching in the back seat to grab my day planner, which had my schedule on it. Because she said, I'm never home. And I was like, oh, I'll prove to you I'm home. I've been home. I'll show you I was home Tuesday. So that's what we did. I argued, we fought, and I was, I literally, she didn't know what I was doing, but I was reaching, I was listening to her like this, I'm reaching back there, and as I'm grabbing my day planner, I hear the voice of God. And it's not an audible voice, just a strong nudge from the Holy Spirit who lives right here in this temple, right? That's where the Holy Spirit lives on a believer. And it was not, it wasn't a nudge, it was a shove, because I heard two words, shut up and listen. And I was, it was that clear, like, do you not, do not touch this thing, just two words, shut up. So she didn't even know, I just went like this, <laughs> mm -hmm. put my hand there, and I said, well, tell me more. And so she started to share her heart, and then I heard God say one more word. And again, this is like miraculous. This isn't like I hear the voice of God every day, but it was clear as day. I heard these words, one word, repent. And I heard him say it three times, repent, repent. So it's really interesting, you know, she's talking on sort of this horizontal level, and I'm hearing God on this vertical level, and here's the amazing, the beauty of God is this, I knew what, what repent meant for me. Because here's the thing, I'm a preacher, I preach that word, right? I know it in the Greek, metanoia, to change your mind, to change your direction, go another way. But when God used the word repent for me, here's what it meant, you are lukewarm, you're not walking with me. And it was in a gentle, loving way, it wasn't condemnation at all, but it was like, you, you know, and, and I knew, man, I was running from this ministry event to this ministry event. I'm preaching to this thing. I'm leaving Bible studies with the team and that kind of stuff. And the only time I would open the Word of God in the last six months of my life was to get a sermon to give to somebody else. I was not intimately listening to God, talking to God. You know, I had built years of a daily quiet time or devo time that was gone. I was just, I was doing ministry for God and leaving God in the dust. I had no real walk with Him. So lukewarm was a great description. It's like you're not hot, you're not cold, you're just sort of doing the deal. Mm -hmm. And here's what repent meant. I knew this. All in one word and in about a minute, I knew he was saying, if you don't put me first, vertical, go vertical first, this will never work. That was all in one word. And it was so miraculous how it was working because I'm listening to Ann, but I know all of this, and I know this will never be fixed just by me trying to help and love her. I need to get God back first in my life. And so she finished... Her little thing. She doesn't know any of this going on. And I just said, you know what? We need to talk and I need to hear more of that. But before we talk, I got to do something and I got to do it right now. You don't need to do this. I do. And I think I need, I want to be on my knees when I do this. And I don't always pray on my knees, but I just felt like I want to be full submission posture. So to this day, I don't know how I turned around in the front seat of a Honda Accord, but I pushed the seat back and I 
just got on my knees and I prayed out loud. You know, the steering wheel was in my back and I just said, God, I am, I need to repent. You're not number one in my life. My job is, everything else is, you aren't, and I repent. I'm lukewarm. And I, I, I remember growing up in a church and saying, I'll never be one of those lukewarm Christians. And there I was. Pre I'm the preacher, preaching it and not living it. So I just said, please make me the husband she deserves and, and the dad my kids long for. I surrender everything. You're number one. Amen. So I turn now, it's like, okay, let's talk. And I turn, and she's on her knees. Which was really interesting when I saw Dave on his knees and he was praying out loud. I, I think of the, the verse in Proverbs that says, a gentle answer turns away wrath. When he started praying out loud and talking to God, I felt like God was talking directly to me through the Holy Spirit. And I felt like he was saying, Ann Wilson, you have been trying to find your life through Dave and you've been trying to get him to meet all your needs and to fulfill all your desires. And he was never meant or built or equipped to fulfill all your needs. That's my job. And so I felt like I had put Dave in my marriage. It had become an idol. And so I got down on my knees in the car beside Dave, took his hand, and I prayed the same thing. God, I have taken my eyes off of you and I put them on Dave trying to fill me. I want him to fill me and he can't do that. So I give my life back to you in full, sur full surrender. I give my life back to you in full surrender and submission. Use our marriage, use our lives to bring you glory. We need you. We can't do this without you. Help us. And that night was the beginning of God restoring us. It didn't happen overnight where my feelings came back, but we went on this journey of God totally coming and restoring our feelings, giving us life, giving us another new perspective of who he is and what he has for us. God is love and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all loving, but that he actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages, free of charge. And a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to feed starving children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.